Hi all, um, welcome to the session on ONAP for XNF-based 5G service orchestration. Uh, myself, Sesh Kumar Mudiganti from Huawei Technologies India Private Limited and uh, me along with my friends from Orange will be demonstrating today the orchestration of free 5G C or the free fifth generation mobile core network orchestration using ONAP. Uh, let's get into the demo. Uh, before we start with the session, I wanted to give a brief on how uh, the journey so far had been with respect to ONAP. ONAP initially, uh, as we know, has been incubated uh, in the month uh, in the year 2017 uh, as Amsterdam release, uh, wherein it actually was a combination of two open source projects, Open Ecom as well as OpenO. And the combination gave us uh, a good platform which actually had a design time, the runtime, and the closed loop uh, interactions of a VNF, the virtual network functions. Then came the third release, the Casablanca release, which was very vital for us, wherein we also had the orchestration of PNF capability introduced in ONAP. Along with this, uh, the major milestone or breakthrough was the introduction of the ETSI uh, standard alignment within ONAP. Initially, we did the SOL3 alignment, uh, as external VNFMs could be also orchestrated along with uh, the uh, services which are there in ONAP. Uh, this was a major breakthrough for us to actually have better standard alignments within ONAP. Then came the Dublin release, wherein we actually improved on all these aspects, the PNF, CVNFs. Along with that, we also introduced the CNF orchestration. Though at this point of time, we were mainly focusing on the uh, POC level of CNF orchestration, wherein we were embedding the Helm chart into the ONAP uh, heat uh, uh, repository, and we were actually onboarding the same onto STC. And for them, for there, we were distributing it to further of ONAP. The CNF constituted of uh, the container network functions uh, uh, semantics, which was actually understood by the KATIS plugin introduced into ONAP. And hence, we were able to do the, the PNF, VNF, and the CNF as a POC still, but uh, by Dublin timeframe. This was evolved further. LALTO release was uh, mostly a maintenance release, wherein we actually took a lot of technical data and cleared it off. But then came the Frankfurt release, wherein we introduced the slicing. Uh, when we're talking about slicing, we are talking about the E2E slicing here. Uh, the, we were mainly focusing on the core, the transport, and the RAN slicing. Uh, though in Frankfurt, we were mainly focusing on the core part of the slicing using a virtual network functions as uh, part of the service. This is evolved further into Guilin and Honolulu, wherein uh, we actually had a full-fledged uh, understanding of Helm charts. Right now, ONAP can onboard Helm charts. We have introduced a new type uh, in the resources, which is a Helm type. Uh, this uh, brought in a, uh, brought in us the uh, the status of a first class relationship for the Helm chart itself instead of uh, a POC level which we started from Dublin. Having said that, now the slicing also uses uh, uh, the core uh, the CN part of it using the CNFs and the transport and the RAN part of it using the uh, VNF mode of it. So this is a quick overview of how we have evolved uh, with respect to the XNF, uh, wherein it constitutes of the PNF, the VNF, and the CNFs, and how the different uh, key requirements and the standard alignments have actually happened within ONAP. Now, coming back to the scenarios uh, which ONAP actually uh, can take in, as I was talking about two major things. One is the ETSI alignment, the other is the native Helm-based uh, orchestration. Both of them are uh, getting done using uh, the uh, current flows. Um, what we want to demonstrate in the current uh, uh, demo is actually the native flow, wherein we have uh, the uh, free 5G core uh, uh, Helm charts being demonstrated using our native flows. And we actually have all the three kinds of resources there. Uh, with that, we will be demonstrating the end-to-end -end, um, orchestration of a 5G core application. Uh, having said that, I want to hand over the flow to my friend uh, Ukash from Orange. Over to you, Ukash. Okay, thank you, Sasha. Now, uh, I would like to focus on a description of different software components and the scenario of uh, the demonstration. Firstly, let's say something about the Towards 5GS uh, project, which is aiming for the simplification of the free 5G core uh, deployment. First of all, uh, like I said, this is an uh, open source project <clears throat> which uh, leverages uh, Kubernetes uh, and uh, Helm uh, and is uh, focused on the deployment and testing of the containerized 5G service on top of uh, Kubernetes. 
So <clears throat> we uh, need to recall that the Kubernetes, of course, is a platform for management of the containerized workloads. YHAM is an uh, application uh, which aims for the simplification of the um, management and installation of the complex uh, application inside the Kubernetes. So in this solution, we uh, leverage uh, open source software components. Uh, the first one is the V5G core a solution which uh, implements uh, the pre-GPP uh, RIS-15 um, specification of the 5G core and uh, it can be decomposed um, into uh, different uh, elements of the 5G core uh, starting from the UPF which is an implementation of the 5G core user plane and AMF, SMF and other components which implement the control plane functionality of the 5G core. The second open source uh, component uh, is the Waran SIM uh, solution, which uh, is uh, an implementation of the user equipment and the uh, G0B uh, for the 5G uh, standard. Both uh, contribute uh, to the towards uh, 5GS uh, project. Uh, both uh, 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 implementations and the towards GS uh, software packages can be found in the GitHub or in the URN SIM uh, software repository there. So if we focus more on the details of the towards 5GS uh, platform, uh, here we can see different uh, software blocks. Mm, uh, the green ones are those of the free 5G core, while uh, the blue ones are are uh, belonging to the URN uh, scene. Uh, moreover, uh, in the uh, dotted lines, we will uh, see the Helm charts. So first of all, to create this uh, solution, we have uh, created uh, Docker images for the 3 g uh, core, and we have placed them in uh, our uh, organization for the uh, future uh, download. Later on, we have created a set of uh, Helm uh, packages, uh, which uh, you can find in uh, uh, towards 5GS uh, repository. And these uh, Helm packages uh, are uh, able to be installed with the standard Helm client or any other implementation of the Helm client, like for instance, the one we can find in the uh, ONAP uh, platform. Uh, further, uh, we have tested uh, the installation of the 3.5G core and URN SIM on a specific uh, configuration of the environment, starting firstly with the Kubernetes version 1.21 and uh, uh, hand client uh, version 3.4.2. However, ONAP implements version 3.5 of the HAM specification and such one was also tested. Um, for uh, the Kubernetes uh, platform itself also, um, there is a requirement uh, to use a specific version of the um, kernel. Uh, for the worker nodes, uh, this, this is required for uh, the deployment of the um, UPF component of the 3.5G core. So, as we can also see, uh, all the software components are split into uh, three uh, Helm packages, uh, two for the 3.5G core and one for the Orin uh, SIM component. Uh, in terms of the uh, further configuration of the platform, we have tested the solution of the Flannel and uh, Calico uh, containerized uh, network interfaces. And the solution also uh, requires uh, the Maltus uh, component to be installed in the Kubernetes, which is required to associate uh, many interfaces with the uh, uh, pods uh, created, uh, selected pods created for the 3.5G core, and not only. And last but not least, uh, we require also uh, the MongoDB, um, which is used for the storage of uh, uh, configuration and uh, state of the components. So altogether, um, 
like it was mentioned that we can find the software components or in the GitHub uh, repository dedicated for uh, for the project or in the Docker Hub organization where uh, Docker images are stored. And in the Bitnami MongoDB um, uh, implementation uh, can be found for the database as well. Now let's uh, focus more on the uh, demonstrated uh, scanner itself. And uh, in the further slides, I would like to present more uh, information on uh, what is the purpose of the demonstration and uh, how looks the demonstration uh, skin errors and how we will utilize the towards 5GS uh, software components uh, along with the uh, ONAP uh, platform in order to orchestrate uh, XNF-based uh, 5G service. So uh, the orchestration of the 5G service, of course, will be uh, performed by ONAP. And here we will leverage the capabilities of the joint orchestration of uh, the CNFs uh, with the PNFs. And uh, mostly thanks to the latest uh, advances in the implementation of the CNF support in, uh, in ONAP and the progressing support for the PNF uh, reconfiguration uh, as well. So uh, in the entire process, we focus on the lifecycle management of the 5G service. However, we don't focus on the orchestration of the networking and we don't uh, do the uh, 5G uh, slicing uh, management. So uh, mainly the software components, lifecycle uh, management and the configuration of them. Uh, we also have an assumption that uh, our infrastructure, of course, will let us to, to, to have the PNFs, uh, the VNFs and the CNFs. Uh, well, the PNFs are typically um, uh, placed on the OpenStack and the CNFs on the Kubernetes. Uh, in our uh, example, in fact, uh, the Kubernetes uh, itself would be created on top of the uh, OpenStack and we will not, uh, doing this demo, uh, orchestration of the uh, VNF. So let's say we have an assumption that this infrastructure is uh, ready and running. So <clears throat> the main purpose of the um, demo uh, is to create a, a service and to have possibility for the end-to-end -end, uh, connectivity test. Uh, one remark more is that we don't, of course, utilize the real uh, PNF, so we use the URM SIM software component. So, uh, in fact, uh, we utilize the orchestration capabilities of, of ONAP to create a, a URM SIM uh, application. And uh, this would be uh, used um, and it would be represented uh, as a uh, PNF in, in one service which will have the PNF and the 5G core uh, CNF. So the entire uh, process of the orchestration starts from the onboarding phase where a network administrator is passing the software uh, packages for our network functions, including the HAM uh, charts for our uh, pre 5G core uh, solution. Then uh, network administrator triggers uh, the deployment process of the CNF, providing necessary uh, input parameters. And uh, with these inputs also we can steer on more and influence how the deployment process will look. However, the deployment process of the CNF cannot be completed until uh, the PNF is uh, registered. So like you uh, have already heard, uh, we will create in the meantime uh, the, mm, the PNF uh, service and the registration event will be sent to ONAP. This will, uh, of course, pass the necessary identifiers of the PNF and will let the, uh, the completion of the uh, 5G core mm, uh, setup. So once this is done, uh, ONAP will perform, uh, first of all, the check of the health check of the mm, CNF and uh, PNF and afterwards will perform the synchronization of the configuration between the CNF uh, and the PNF. Thanks to that, uh, both uh, network functions will have the same configuration, so uh, it will allow us for the creation of the uh, network con connectivity. Uh, of course, uh, the last one would not be possible uh, till we don't create the um, uh, user profile uh, in the control plane. 
So we will utilize the capability of ONAP for the creation of the um, customized workflows uh, for uh, the registration um, and the creation of the uh, subscription. And this is completed. At the end, we perform the connectivity test uh, where we uh, show that all the setup and orchestration was completed uh, properly and end-to-end -end connectivity from the user equipment to the internet um, is possible. So, in the further part of the uh, demonstration, um, my, uh, we will show in uh, eight uh, different uh, steps uh, the uh, recording the demonstration. And it will be more or less decomposed like it was uh, shown in the previous uh, uh, slide. I think it's worth to mention also that uh, the entire process is uh, automated and for that purpose we utilize the ONAP SDK, uh, which is a Python library which um, covers the REST APIs uh, exposed by the ONAP platform. So uh, this was uh, used to create all the um, automation uh, environment, uh, automation logic, which uh, in fact also um, uh, is inspired by the work done in the VFIRO CNF uh, use case, which officially demonstrate the capabilities for the CNF orchestration in ONA. Hello, my name is Michał and I would like to thank my colleagues Łukasz Abderauf, Ilan and Seshu very much for their very good cooperation. The result of our work is a short demo which I will have a pleasure to present. The orchestration of free 5G core using Open Network Automation Platform. The first step mentioned by Wukash is service onboarding. It is triggered by running the onboard script. During this procedure, all necessary packages and files describing the service are uploaded to ONAP. The service package is prepared in advance and contains two types of network function models. The first one is a descriptor of the PNF radio access network. The other one defines the CNF core part and consists of Helm chart and post-configuration operation specification. The PNF package is uploaded and validated first. Then the core part package is processed by ONAP. The last step of onboarding process is service distribution. Descriptors and required files are being passed to specific ONAP components during this operation. Once it is finished, service is ready for deployment. In software design and creation application, we can look through onboarded resources. The components of 5G service are presented here. Resources related to run simulator can be found here also. In details of core service, there is a composition tab that presents service graphical visualization, PNF and CNF. The deployment of our use case begins with free 5G core instantiation, which is started in the right top window by running instantiate script. The goal of this process is the creation of the CNF instance defined by the Helm package. But it is not the pure Helm chart, but the package that includes complex models describing the process of parametrization and post-instantiation configuration. ONAP is a very powerful tool for such operations. The platform allows parametrizing Helm packages with input parameters defined by ONAP. Thanks to a wide range of parameter resolution methods, they can be resolved as input or read from an external system or service. CNF Helm package with a set of custom parameters is instantiated by ONAP in selected Kubernetes cluster and dedicated namespace. The free 5G core use case is a single Helm chart with multiple parameters resolved from the input. Details 
of Kubernetes cluster prepared for demo purpose needs to be registered inside ONAP. Its identification data are also passed as one of the instantiation parameters. Progress of the instantiation process is shown in the logs. You can observe actually running building block and the number of steps that remain until the end of deployment. Core instantiation would not be started before PNF association with the service. This is the result of the PNF registration process. In our case, PNF is simulated by URAN SIM Helm application treated by ONAP like PNF. Its instantiation is run in the right bottom window and takes about 30 seconds. During post instantiation operation, for run CNF, a registration request is sent to the orchestrator. This procedure passes required identification parameters of PNF to ONAP and as a result enables communication with PNF from ONAP perspective. Registration of the PNF is required for the continuation of core CNF instantiation. It takes about 3 minutes and 20 seconds until all pods are up and running. The status of the pods is monitored during post instantiation status check. At this stage, core and run parts are instantiated and run is properly registered as physical network function. All pods are in the running state, but the reconfiguration of the radio access network is not completed yet. Connectivity test that verifies end-to-end -end connection is implemented as a Kubernetes job and run by ONAP as a health check operation. During the job execution, interfaces attached to the user equipment simulator and the execution of the ping command are verified. Missing USIMTAN0 interface is the reason for test failure. The connection from the UE towards the internet through free 5G core cannot to be established. Further reconfiguration of the RAM components is needed to deliver a working service. After CNF instantiation and PNF registration, ONAP can run day two reconfiguration operations. One of them is checking by ONAP status of the created pods in the Kubernetes cluster. If all of them are up and running, following procedures could be run. In order to complete service deployment, ONAP can execute specific scripts, call REST APIs, or perform any other operation defined in the onboarding model for specific XNF. We utilize this functionality to perform registration and reconfiguration operations. The first use of this mechanism is to register user equipment and to make its subscription in free 5G core. The second use is the reconfiguration of the PNF. Based on the reconfiguration template, parameters like MNC and MCC resolved from core CNF can be modified in the run part. As a result of the reconfiguration procedure, GNodeB pod is recreated with updated parameters. The creation of new pod and termination of the old one have been already done at the beginning of the video. The successful subscription is visible in the dashboard of the free 5G core network. The result of GNOTE B reconfiguration could be observed in the real-time status tab, where UE status is connected now. The connectivity test job is still running and creating new test pods. After successful recreation 
of the Genode B pod, it is expected that the test will pass. It is confirmed with the test pod that the status is completed. In the right bottom window, you can see the logs from the completed pod. This time, the US in TAM0 interface is attached to the user equipment and ping Google works well. None of the packets sent to the internet through the free 5G core was lost. End-to-end -end connectivity towards the internet through free 5G core is established. The connectivity test job cleans up all test pods after 100 seconds since test completion. It's good to have also a mechanism that removes other resources from the Kubernetes cluster. We are doing that with the dedicated script, which is started in the right bottom window for the run part. In the Kubernetes console, you can observe the termination of the UE and the Gnode B pods. In the free 5G core dashboard, you can observe that the status of considered UE has been changed from connected to idle. I really appreciate your attention during today's meeting. I hope this presentation and demo were interesting and satisfying to you. If anyone has any question, please feel free to ask them now in the chat. Sesho and Wukash will do their best to answer all of them. Thank you very much.